surprise visit from Magnus and Wendy from Life in a Nutshell. Hi guys, thanks for calling and seeing us. We really do appreciate your support. Hello you lovely people. Today I'm going to tackle what's down here, which is the water pump and uh, filter system. Now currently we've got this little filter, which is a, like a, just a wire strainer. If I show you what they look like inside, here's one I've got. Here's one I prepared earlier. I'll just unscrew this because I'm so unorganised. Um, what you have is a wire mesh that sits inside. So basically, inside there is this wire mesh. Now, this particular one is the lid. You can see there's a little crack across the top there. It's been tightened over and so it does or has been leaking. Whenever this is twisted over like that, it leaks, so fortunately. And also it draws a little bit of air in there as well, which is not good. So we're gonna take this out, but also, as you can see, the water comes from the tank, which is down there, down there. okay. And then it comes into that, and then it goes into the pump, which is a 12 volt pump. And then from the pump, it goes into this, for want of a better word, it's like a compression chamber okay which stores it so that basically means when you turn the tap on you've got a good pressure and that will keep flowing before uh, for a few seconds before the pump kicks in and then from there it goes off and down the boat all the way down there um for where the water is used okay what i'm planning to do is add some filters because i'm not too keen on um drinking out the tank tank so we've got two kinds of filters that we're going to be putting in here and they're pretty big filters. One is a for pre-filter which will basically take out X amount of particles and the second one is a ceramic one and what that will do is uh, remove basically chlorine, uh, well, I sodium hypochlorite that's in the drinking water, even moves, removes bacteria as well. Okay so pretty much best water you can get. Uh, this one's domestic house level. Um, which is a little bit overkill, I suppose, for what we're doing, but I'm going to fit them in anyway because I have them. Um, and they're reusable filters, so the, the first filter is, is something like this. Okay, and then you can wash this and clean it out. Um, and then eventually replace with a new one once you're happy to do that. The second one, which I'll show you a bit later on, is ceramic. It's actually like a porcelain type stone, uh, so it's very minute and catch the smallest bacteria and I'll show you that a bit later on once we get started so I'm gonna to have to jiggle things around I've got my fittings etc speed fi fittings and then uh, we're basically uh, we're going to uh, might have to find some space in here to fit these because they're a bit tall but we'll work it out all right so I'll catch up with you soon okay so it's Doctor Who and the Mistrons <laughs> what do you think of my little torch but really handy got that idea from Magnus and Wendy on a Life in a Nutshell, because they use one all the while. So it look a little bit of a wally, but at the same time I can see what I'm doing because it's getting dark. So let me show you where we've got to now, and I'm just gonna turn my torch on as well so you can get a real understanding. So what we have done is 
because of the space we had for the filters, I've had to cut this wooden panel out here, which takes you straight down to the uh, bottom of the boat, basically. Okay. Um, so I've took that out, which allows me to lower the floor, basically. And then those feet, those filters can fit properly. And then the panel can go back on the top without touching the, the bleed hole, which is the little button you press to get the air out when you first prime it up. So, um, all in all, I'm going to get rid of the torch now because you should be able to see, he says. Um, so what we've got is the water comes in from down there, as we pointed out earlier on. This is the um, pump guard, which is basically a, a wire mesh filter that allows that collects large particles. Um, and it goes from there, along here, and down to the pump. Okay. Um, so we've wired up the pump, which was already there anyway, just fitted the pipes and fittings etc you know um i haven't done it to how i'd like it i'm gonna probably spend a bit more time but obviously we were without water so i've just sort of stuck it on that piece of wood and screwed it down but it will be fitted a bit more securely later on once we've got time i'm running out of time today so it comes through the pump and the pump pulls that liquid through into this T piece, which then goes off to this accumulator, which basically is like an expansion chamber to give it some uh, pressure uh, so it can back it up because this is a pressure switch pump. So once the pressure builds up, it switches off automatically. And then it goes up along here to this little bend here, straight into the first pre filter. Now, this pre filter is basically a washable filter, and uh, that. Let me get this right. That does it to 30 microns, okay? And that's like what a double ended, um, open end, double open end, nine and three quarter inch micron filter, 30 microns, okay? And that pretty much looks a little bit like this. All right. And then from there, it goes along here into the second one now i haven't shown you what's inside here and i'm not going to take it to bits now but basically it's a porcelain filter so it's a bit like a porous stone and they call it ceramic sometimes a ceramic filter but basically there's in each one of there's about uh, eight long <sighs> shafts of ceramic filter in here and and then one uh, central center a filter of about that thickness in the middle again made of ceramic so it's very it's like a porous fine filter that takes it out to five microns so that will actually remove bacteria waterborne bacteria uh, chlorine i.e sodium hypochlorite which they put in drinking water um, it will remove all of that so theoretically the water that we're going to get out of this system even though it's coming from the tank which is right up in the top there on the floor it's going to come through here and it will be come out through like bottled water basically so the filter here is washable and so is this one but we've also got some uh, filters uh, the spare ones as well so all in all pretty nice setup so um, we've already chlorinated the water to make sure that's uh, all the waterborne diseases have been killed in the tank and it's been sitting around and we flushed it through twice and so it's just a question of us um, letting it flush through a few times on the tap and then drops a good one. I've put a tap there just to isolate it, but that's where it goes off into down to the back end of the boat, the uh, clarifier and or clarifier, chlorifier, <laughs> and the hot and cold tap bath shower and the sink, etc. So all in all, very happy with how that's planned turned out. Um, and no leak which is always a bonus at the best of times so that's enough of that uh, let me spin this round so it's getting dark now so I'm gonna call it a day but I'm really excited about this it's been something I've been really meaning to do for a long time bought the kit I think all those filters the ceramic filters fittings etc etc cost around I think it was around 300 pounds in total um, and remember it's your drinking water at the end of the day so unless you buy a filter and, and you put it in the fridge and filter it that way then this is a bit more upscaled industrial uh, sort of level really a bit overkill but that's me in a nutshell so <laughs> anyway thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed the install and um have a have, have a fresh water forever
see you later Bye. hi people anybody you uh, on YouTube recognize these where it's upside down it's got a little valve in the bag <clears throat> and you put fingers in it can you guess what it is yet <laughs> it's basically a vacuum bag and what me and Bridget are doing right now are folding up our winter clothes because we don't quite need them yet it's still quite nice out isn't it bridge and um, sucking the air out of them and you're folding these up like so and then putting them in the bag and then we'll get the vacuum cleaner and suck it out the air that is see you in a minute what do we do okay just gently squash out as much air as you can and then run the sealer along not too vigorously otherwise it can catch and then go back the other way just to make sure and that's that and then you put the Hoover in there. Put it on max. Give the dice and can handle it. by giving it a little push down mark. Wow. Long compacted winter coats and jackets. I don't think I can get any more out of it. I'll try, but that's not bad, is it? Pretty good. So you store your winter clothing under your bed when you're not using it. Airtight, moth resistant, waterproof. Damp proof. Damp proof. And then once you want your winter clothing, you swap your summer clothing into this bag and come out comes your winter clothing. And that's how you do it. Hello people. Uh, today what I'm doing is installing a 4G um, EE omnidirectional mast which is to basically to boost up my 4G reception so as part of my cruising I have to um, part of my continuous cruising I have to have access to the internet so to make sure that we can get that to run our e-commerce site and our other business um, we basically have to have internet so we chose down we've gone down the route of a 4G router and external aerial and it's an omnidirectional aerial so it will pull in a signal when you wouldn't normally get it with a normal mobile okay because it's external so if i just show you so this is the mast on the side so here's the boat there's the mast it's about two foot and then the bracket as well it has two aerial inputs in and they follow through into the cabin area I've got a 4G EE my router they call it I think and this has two inputs on the back okay there and there what this means is you connect two aerials through to it this gives you 4G plus and uh, pulls in the signal much better than the, the built-in aerial that's actually in the box um, and gives you a lot more speed um, if everything works together which it does so I'm just um, it comes with loads of cable <laughs> so um, we need to shorten those cables so that's what I'm doing at the moment I've just trimmed this off just soldered the end of this here like so and then I've basically got to fit these terminals on there and so give me a few minutes I'll get that soldered up and then I'll show you the results speak to you soon okay so I've now trimmed that cable down I've still got the other one to do and I'm now going to fit some amalgamation tape over this terminal here um, to keep it tight and amalgamation tape is like the stuff they use on satellite TV cables when they connect to the the LMBs on the dishes it's really stretchy and sticky and holds itself and then sort of welds itself together so that's going to go around to there and wrap a few times and then we'll do the other cable because I've got all this spare, look, look at that, all that cut off. So once I do this one, it'll be all tidy and a much more neater installation. So I'm quite pleased with that. And the speeds we're getting at the moment from here 
we've got two bars on the box um, which is giving us uh, on 4G I just did a test it was 35 megabytes per second in this particular area so that's not bad going uh, much faster than any BT infinity and uh, so <laughs> really pleased with that there you have it one terminated cable correctly with the amalgamation tape fitted which basically self welds across the top of that nice clean installation I'll just do the other one and the job will be finished right, so there's the 4G box from EE and you see look three bars which is actually four bars in reality that is goes through the wall right the way up there okay and then that comes out of there in the middle I'm gonna get some um, expanding foam which is what I'm today to finish that off just to make sure that the spray in, inside there fill that gap in there's no moving cable so it shouldn't wear through but if it does I'll I'll just put some tape around it then that goes through hang on into the, ah, there we go into that pipe up the pipe up the pipe out the top and straight into the bottom of the unit there and the aerial and that's picking up 4g and what that will mean basically what that will mean in layman's terms is we will be able to pick up 4G for our internet, which we stream all our TV and we don't watch live TV, so we just watch streaming TV and, and uh, download films, etc. through Netflix. So um, we need 4G for our business as well, and this will pull it in. So normally a mobile would probably get two bars here. In fact, I know it does. We're now pulling in um, four, uh, three bars here, which is full strength. But also because if you've got two inputs on the back of the box like so so can you see that one aerial input there and another aerial input just there what that means is you can actually pick up 40 plus which is the next level that it, uh, the uh, broadband sister uh, networks are putting out um, and so two cables hence the two cables here and then that picks in 4g plus so we can get uh, download speeds of up to like 80 megabytes per second currently just did some tests on, on one of those apps you can download on your phone and um, it was very it was 35 megabytes per second where we are currently given the time of day which is seven o'clock so everybody's watching television nowadays through their broadband so hence the reason why the speed isn't 100 percent up the top um so yeah my opinion oh, i've got to take this silly hat off hang on got to look presentable Ooh. so my um, take on the way things are going is um, we are all going to be watching television or broadcasts or programmings or films pretty much all through the internet um, there is no point sending up satellites up into the orbit and then broadcasting through them when the internet does it perfectly well so what that means is your uh, BT landline or your landline cable is all limited to the fact that they can only transfer so much data through these phone lines. And, uh, so, I mean, my BT Infinity, which is what I had prior to us moving on the boat, we used to get 20, 20, 18 megabytes per second. And the upload speed was actually pants about five megs. Using the 4G, which was just done now, um, we're getting uploads of 45 50 megabytes per second so hence for the youtube channel that's brilliant for us um, and downloads of 30 currently but it will settle out and get better as we go along we're actually on a broadband package a, a, a 4g package from ee there are other service providers out there we're currently paying we need 300 gig a month which sounds a lot but we do watch all our television through that as well and also upload uh, youtube videos and stuff so you don't need to go that far if you're just a domestic user of course unless you've got thousands of children and they're all watching uh, youtube and facebook etc which they will be because that's what's happening nowadays so you will need the extra gig so we get 300 gig we were on a 200 gig which was 60 pound a month I've upgraded to a 90 pound a month which is 300 gig and that just about covers what we want to do it hasn't run out yet so I'm really happy with that um, so that's enough for me sort of 
uh, jibber jabbing on about that. But I'm really pleased how this has turned out, and um, we'll keep you sort of up to date on the rest of the blogs as well to see how well it's going. Some people walking down the towpath. So, anyway, that's, that's enough from me, and I would say goodbye from uh, Poppy. <laughs> that's right, Poppy. And say goodbye from Busto or Buster. And where's Marley? Marley, where are you? Come here. Ah, that's a good night from Marley as well, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so we'll catch you again soon and uh, have a great day. Bye for now. Bridget? Yes? What are you doing? I'm painting. What are you painting? I'm painting my awkward, odd uh, picture frames because we've got them all up on the wall. But, uh, well, as you can see, the frame is blue and all the other frames are white or light and I want all of the frames that are up on the walls to have that same light effect so I've masking taped it off I'm going to give it a couple of coats because it's a bit of a dark paint but then once they're put back up on the wall they will all stand out the same and what are you using? Well, I'm using a chalk paint Rust-Oleum which I think Rust-Oleum is the brand but there's lots of chalk paints out there okay there are chalk paints that are very well known uh, after a, a really great um, upcycler I think that's how her paint product started Annie Sloan okay uh, so it's that type of paint um, and apparently, I've read the instructions on the back of the tin, and I can give it a, a sort of an ageing effect by putting two colours on it. Well, the fact that it's already got a dark colour underneath, and I'm actually putting the white on the top, I might get a bit of fine sandpaper and just rub the odd parts to let some of the blue show through. I'll, right. see, I'll see how it looks when it's done, though. Well, well, we'll, we'll come back to you. Okay. Say what news have you, Bridget? I've finished painting my frame. Have you really? Yes, and it's up on the wall. Is it? Yes. Yes. So much better. Where is it? Just there. Aha, uh -huh. I see. So that's pretty cool. So you've basically painted the frame, Just the frame. white chalk paint. On this occasion, you're not going to distress it with some paper. No, or no, I like it just white because it actually makes the ropes pop. Pop. Because before it was the same colour dark blue as the background. Yeah. That's with three coats um, with a small brush. So I probably could have brushed it with a bigger brush and got a nicer effect. But I think chalk paint leaves that effect. Oh, I do. Well, Don't I think me. you've done a good job and you deserve the rest of the day off. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon, Pops? What do you reckon, Pop? Yeah. Job well done. How about you, Marlon? You don't think much to it either. No. Oh, don't mind. Well, I think it's good. What do you reckon? Hmm? Oh, don't, don't jump up at me. The dogs will just whack your tail the on there. That will distress the it. <laughs> <laughs> the dog distress. Oh, Buster! What do you think? You think it's good too? Oh, that's a good point. Ah, oh, well, there you go. See you later.